Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. I love this one. I love this one. You know, they always say, look, I know this person isn't palatable to you lefties. I know you don't like this person. Meaning I know this person is not going to suit any political agenda. They're not going to really try to get anything done. No, you can't necessarily expect your pony. But they would give you a decent Supreme Court pick. Meaning if nothing else, when Scalia kicks the bucket, the person that the Democrat is going to put in is going to be somewhat of a lefty. And at the very least, if nothing else, if nothing else, that's the reason to vote for that random wheat bread Democrat that they're just going to plug into the slot. Take a look at this. WikiLeaks reveal Clinton considered a Texas Republican for the Supreme Court. I had not seen this. This came out in October, so I am displaying this now. I was after conservative Supreme Court Justice Antony Scalia passed away. The Clinton campaign floated a Texan as a possible replacement. Wallace Jefferson, a former chief justice on the Texas Supreme Court, was the subject of an email titled Scalia Replacement, written by the president of a George Soros-backed grant-making organization. Remember our discussion with Wallace Jefferson, chief justice in Texas, said Open Society Foundation's president Chris Stone in the email. Yep replied Clinton campaign, John Podesta. The hacked email was one of thousands released by WikiLeaks in recent weeks, and the authenticity of the email could not be independently confirmed. The Clinton campaign declined to confirm the authenticity of the email mentioning Jefferson. In a brazen display of collusion, Russian state-owned television continues to promote WikiLeaks releases, even before Assange can do it, even after it's been proven beyond any reasonable doubt that the Russians are the source of the purported Podesta material. Clinton campaign spokesman Glenn Kaplan said in a statement, if it's a Clinton involved in the process, you probably can tell that they're probably lying. It's been proven beyond any reasonable doubt that the Russians are the source of the purported Podesta materials. By any reasonable doubt. It is a flat fact, according to the Clinton camp. Flat fact. Flat fact. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. If that's true, how come nobody else can say that? I mean, the people who would want to say that, who would want to scream it at the top of their lungs, can't say that, have never said that. They would wiggle, they would dance, they would moonwalk, they would do all these things, as opposed to actually saying it. The Clinton campaign doesn't have a problem saying it. How come the Clinton campaign? Meaning all of these other people who say, okay, we would want to say this, but we can't say this because that would just be a flat fact, out and out lie doesn't stop the Clinton campaign at all. doesn't stop them at all. Jefferson did not immediately respond to the email seeking comment. Texas Christian University politics professor Jim Riddlesburg said it is not surprising that the Clinton campaign lined up potential replacements for Scalia before its death, even if it comes off unseemly. He said the most surprising aspect of the email is that Clinton would consider Jefferson because he's a Republican. Obviously, Wallace Jefferson has some some attractiveness because he's a minority appointment. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? He's black, white, gay, Hispanic. So, yeah, yes, that's what's important. What the fuck is he going to do on that on the, on the on the court? Yes, if we're having a conversation where you're saying, look, all things been equal. If this guy is giving the policy positions that you want from the Supreme Court bench. That's my first point. That's why I start. If you want to talk about getting a dark in afterwards, fair enough. But can we at least start that the first most important thing is what the fuck is he going to preside on? What is he going to say? What is he going to do? What are the rulings that this guy is going to make? Shit, man. Talking about guys, minority. I understand that. What is the rulings he going to make? You've put a Republican. You're talking about putting a Republican on the bench. Let's see. Obviously, Wallace Jefferson has some attractiveness because he's a minority appointment, and people are constantly looking for more diversity on the court, Riddlesburg said. There's a desire by Democrats to reach out to Texas by reaching across party lines. That's something for Democrats to make Texas more competitive moving forward. Even though Jefferson is a Republican, Riddlesburg said Jefferson's judicial philosophy could be centrist or left of center of the Supreme Court. He is seen as a moderate force. Riddlesburg said, he certainly was never a controversial justice. 
So are you telling me just I am not going to belabor the point. I am not going to beat a dead horse. I am not going to kick a dead cat. But are you telling me, are you actually telling me that you as a Democratic president feel the need to reach across the lines and put a Republican on that bench? The guy who's going to be on that bench for the rest of his goddamn life. You as a Democrat taking office would have put a Republican on that bench anyway or potentially a Republican on that bench anyway. You vote Democrats for presidents because at least you get the Supreme Court. At least you get the Supreme Court. They should not have even been considering a Republican for the Supreme Court. They should not have even been considering a Republican. And that's my point. This is not the thing of politics in a sense of, let's get a minority for this position. Let's consider a minority for this position because he's a Republican. Let's reach out to Texas. What about, what are the things you want to accomplish on that bench? And you're putting that guy on that bench for the rest of his life. Don't you think that you should put somebody on that represents the interests of the people who are voting for you? Particularly if that guy is going to be presiding on the bench for the rest of his life. Shit. At least liberal. At least put a liberal on. Yes, he's going to fuck us over on the corporate stuff. But at the very least, he's not going to get rid of, let's say, abortion. Honestly, if you're going to do that, yeah, man, this is, this is sad. This is sad. Merrick Garland, chief judge of the District of Columbia in the Circuit Court of Appeals, was nominated by Barack Obama to fill Scalia vacancy after his death. Republicans have refused to move forward on Garland's nomination. Even Garland was a pathetic choice. It was a pathetic choice. Look, if you want to pick a judge, pull a flaming lefty, a guy fucking ridiculously to the left, if Republicans shoot him down, fine. Then pick Merrick Garland. But at the very least, go for the person that you actually want. Unless Merrick Garland is the person that you actually wanted. Unless this guy is the person that Hillary Clinton actually wanted. They are moving so far to the right that now even Supreme Court picks are moving to the right. Leave it at that. When you hear them make that argument, you got to vote Democrat because you got to get the Supreme Court. You got to get the Supreme Court. Got to get Supreme Court. I remember Sam Cedar making this argument. You got to get Supreme Court. When the person who you're voting for as a Democrat, who you're strategically voting for as effort, is willing to put in a Republican, then it guts the argument. I mean, the very fact that they're willing to put in a Republican guts that argument. Completely guts it. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support through Patreon. Thanks, guys.